Hi guys, how you doing? Uh, I'm Patrick, um, the person whose boot camp program <laughs> or athletic program you signed up to. Uh, so you guys are starting in a few weeks. Uh, I just decided to make a, a quick quickish video of a few things that I think might be worth a wee sort of practicing at home before you start. So I think it's important to remember it's a program. Um, it's a training, athletic training program, week one through to week 16. So the idea is that each week um, we'll sort of like build on the previous week. Um, so you could say that this stuff is to sort of almost help sort of prepare you for week one. Um, so if anyone's feeling a bit um, anxious about it, don't worry, that's completely normal. Everyone always feels a wee bit anxious or they worry that they're the most unfit in the class. That's quite a common um, query on, on Facebook and things like that. Uh, but you needn't worry, there's plenty of new folk, uh, both the relevant and the shed. The programmes that are running are going to be very similar. Uh, the coaches are all there to help you. So, um, But if you want, I would strongly recommend that you practice some of this stuff that I'm about to go through. Uh, it's not I've, not, I've not necessarily planned specifically what this video is going to entail other than the, the basics that will help you um, from week one all the way through to week 16. So some of you might have might already be into training and this might all be really basic and, and straightforward for you, um, but it's not, no harm going over it again. Um, so there is a few basic things I want to quickly go over. Um, where even when doing this video, if any of the exercises here cause pain, then just just don't do them, right? Just let us know. Um, so one of the first things is that um, when people when we ask people to squat, for example, a lot of folk will maybe say that they've got, they've got dodgy knees or they've got bad knees or, or that bending their knees causes pain. Usually, not all cases, but usually it's not so much the issue. It isn't actually the, the knees. Uh, it's just that the movement itself isn't isn't being done correctly. So it's important that you learn uh, quite quickly how to evenly distribute your own body weight through your lower body in order to minimise the likelihood of getting sort of knee pain and things like that. Um, so first things first, one of the things I recommend you do between now and the start is walk about in your bare feet more, okay? Um, so try and train your feet to, to, to work and do the job they're meant to do. When you're wearing trainers or you're wearing high heels especially, uh, or any sort of heel, and the, 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 the trainer is doing the job that the muscles in the foot should be doing. So um, that becomes really quite uh, an issue um, with this program because there's a running element and quite often people get sore Achilles. So it's important to understand that usually Achilles pain will stem from tight calves. Not always, obviously, but usually it's tight calves and the chances of you having tight calves are much higher if you wear heels. So if you're a female and you go to work and you wear heels, um, or male and go to work with heels, it's up to you. But my point is, if you wear heels, your your calf, your, your likelihood is that your calves are going to be tighter um, and therefore you're more prone to sort of Achilles pain and stuff like that, which will become quite apparent early on. So the first thing I suggest is try and wear your bare feet more, okay? On that topic, when it comes to squatting, obviously one of the first things you're going to be asked to do is squat. So it's important that you try and learn to distribute the weight evenly through the whole foot when you squat. So quite common, we'll ask folk, we, one of the things we'll say to folk is to make sure you don't let your knees cave in when you squat like this, okay? Um, it, it, it means you're not making the best use of the glute muscles or the abductor muscles around this side of the, the hip. And, and in some ways, strengthening the glute muscles will, will help uh, alleviate that. Some In some cases, just simply being aware of not letting your knees cave in when you squat will prevent you or will help. Um, but in a lot of cases, you need to also concentrate on how the weight's getting distributed through your feet. So if you're starting off and you feel as though all the weight is is, is into your instep of your foot going through the sort of the ball of the foot, and this is this is really flat here, um, it's going to be a lot more likely that when you squat down or when you lunge or deadlift or anything that your knees are going to come in a wee bit, regardless of how strong this area might be. So it's almost a case of what came first, chicken or the egg, the weak glutes, the knee valgus or the fact that your feet are starting off in a, a sort of unfavourable position. So when our knees cave in like that, it's called valgus knee, okay? And we really want to try and avoid that if possible uh, with beginners, especially when, when you're squatting and deadlifting uh, or lunging or any, other, uh, or any other leg exercise. So try and, what we want to try and do is think about curling, try to pull the carpet or the, or the floor towards you by gently curling the toe up. Not, not aggressively, just gently. And what that should do is it should help sort of raise the arch slightly a wee bit or you should feel a bit more tension through the top of the foot okay what that will hopefully do as well is it will almost automatically push the weight distribution onto the outside of your foot a wee bit more so that it's it should still be on the balls of the foot but equally it should also be on the outside so in other words make sure when we think about weight distribution and all the exercises you're going to be doing think about the weight being distributed through the ball of the foot 
the small toe in the heel. So it's almost like a, it's like a tripod of weight distribution, okay? From there, we want you to try, you can widen your stance or narrow your stance depending on how mobile and how tall you are, okay? Um, if you have a slightly wider stance and you open the foot angle to about 11 o'clock and 1 o'clock or 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock, you should be able to go down lower into a deeper squat. And the deeper the range, the more desirable is essentially, is certainly um, in the early weeks, uh, because the deeper the range you're working the, working through, then the more muscle recruitment you're, you're achieving. Okay, and obviously mobility is one aspect of, of, of fitness that we're trying to address. So what we're trying to practice is thinking about the weight distribution going through the foot when you perform things like squats. Okay, so a basic squat will should basically allow you to you should bend your knee and your hips simultaneously. So as you go down you should bend your knee and push your hips back. So a lot of the time people struggle with knee pain when they squat and it's because they don't push their hips back enough and they end up performing a squat like loading all the weight through the front of their feet um, and through the, the knees. So it looks like this, so they do that and that's going to cause knee pain because the hips aren't going back and all the weight is going to go through the front of the quads and then through the knees. So that's why it's important that when you squat that you not only bend the knees, but you also bend the hips, you push the hip back, so that the, the, the weight is getting more evenly distributed through the heel of the foot, therefore the glutes and hamstrings are, are sort of coming into play a bit more. Now, don't worry if you can't squat. If, if you're trying to squat down where your hip can pass your knee and you feel as though you're gonna do this and fall back, don't worry, that's quite normal, okay? The best thing I can suggest is that this is something else to practice in the house, okay? So, Use, a, use an anchor, <laughs> like a chair, it has to be quite a heavy chair, otherwise you might fall back anyway, regardless of the anchor. But use something that's anchored, and what that should do is that it'll allow you to go down low without falling back, because it ba basically you can hold on to the chair, okay? Um, so that's something to sort of work on. Just sit into this deep range squat position, get as deep as you can. In, in an ideal world, most folk will be able to go down to this level eventually, not, not initially, but eventually, if you're watching like telly or Love Island or any of that sort of stuff, then try and just sit for a few minutes watching it like this. This is a chance for you to practice a bit of mobility work without having to think about it. And you can just sort of rock about once you're in that position. You can kind of just rock from side to side. You can wedge your elbows in at the side of the knees to stop your knees from caving in as well. And again, that will, that will help assist you to make sure that the weight doesn't go through this part of the foot too much, so push the elbow, push the knees out if you want, and just rock from side to side, okay? You might find it's a bit sore in the ankles, so maybe your ankle mobility needs a wee bit of work, but again, simply being in this position can help that. Um, if you've got any questions about tight calves, if you know you've got tight calves, feel free to email and we'll go through that, but we'll cover that at the classes as well. Um, so, I would practice that. You could even practice some simple box squatting, so, you can take a chair and all you need to do is practice what, what we've just gone over here. Um, push the hips back, bend the knees to come down to the chair. But the main thing to think about is when you get back up. So a lot of folk will struggle to, to squat properly and they will struggle to use the muscles in their legs properly. And that's when like knee issues and pain come into play. And what they tend to do is that they'll sort of lean out, they'll lean over it and they'll brace their hands against their legs and they'll kind of push up as if they're 110, right? Um, and it's just because they're not they're not sure or they've not learned yet how to perform one of those natural movements on earth, the squat properly. To, that's what the muscles are there for. So try your best to just sit in the seat, fairly upright, lean forward the hips a wee bit, and think about that, what we just mentioned about weight distribution through the foot. So make sure that the weight is going through the heel. Gently curl the toes if you want, if it helps. And make sure there's a decent bit of weight going through the heel, the toe, the small toe and the ball of the foot, and the toe, big toe. And that's so as you step up, Try your best to keep the weight going through the heel as well as the ball of the foot, like so, okay? So that you're not putting too much of the weight going through the front part of the knee, okay? So, for example, if you don't think about putting the weight through the heel and you just sort of lean into it and then all the weight goes through, you might even, your heels might even come off the ground um, and all the weight goes through the front of the foot. That's the sort of thing that might end up causing pain in the knee. And it's the same with a free flowing squat. So a lot of folk, if they struggle to squat low, to get down lower, they'll end up doing this and they'll come off, they'll come off the, the heel, they'll come off the floor. So again, that's something we want to avoid. So but the idea is to come, keep the feet planted on the, on the floor at all times. So I would suggest you just practice maybe sets of 10 of this movement here. Just really try to dial it into your head 
about where the weight distribution of the foot weight is through your foot and as you come up make sure the weight is free, going equally through the heel as well as the ball of the foot and the small foot you can just come up and down and really try and control the movement on the way down though so make it an active engagement of the muscle on the way down as opposed to just ah done the day's over i'm tired so it's quite easy that that's you're going to fall anyway because of gravity so your job is to just is not to let gravity do the work your job is to let your muscles do the work so try and control the movement on the way down okay so use your muscles to control the movement okay um if you want you can try the same sort of thing with a lunge okay now lunges are quite difficult so again if you're if you're a beginner so again you could maybe use a prop like i don't know a chair just to give you a bit of assistance like a crutch right uh, and again the, the working leg of a lunge will be the front leg so your job is to again to try and make sure that the weight isn't doing this the weight isn't going all, th all the way through this part of the foot so open the foot or open the hip open this part of the hip which will bring in the glutes more okay um, and then make sure that there's a nice even distribution through the tripod that we just mentioned the heel the ball of the foot and the toe the small toe and as you step up try and try and really think about pushing through the heel and come upright okay and then come back down that way as opposed to again this so the wrong way to do it is the heel would come off the floor okay and you would come up and down like that and again chances are you're more likely to get some sort of pain at the front of the, the knee so these are the things i want you to think about it's very basic in, in the sense that i don't want you to overthink it just think about getting more to grips with weight distribution through the foot in relation to squats and lunges and how you move up and down and that will take away some of the pressure away from this knee area and, and, and relocate it to the muscles around the hip or the glutes okay and then obviously the quads too um so that's that's a few things i would suggest you practice if you feel lunges cause pain regardless of the the crutch and the concentration here of the of the foot instead you could try step ups i've not got a proper step ups but pretend you're going to step up onto something like this but not as high as this okay and just try and think about the same thing just step right up pushing up through the heel keeping your hip nice and tall okay but we'll go through all this and uh, over the first few weeks other things to consider is practice and engaging your glutes and core simultaneously so you can sit in this position here push your chest out so squeeze your mid back muscles okay here to push your chest out like this and again we've just mentioned that foot position what i want you to do here is try and you're going to bring your hips up but try and initiate it by tucking your tailbone under you okay so you're going to tuck your tailbone under like that at the same time make sure you're pushing up through the heels of your feet okay and squeeze the glutes hard at the top again if you're focusing on tucking your tailbone under hopefully what it will do it will, it, is it that it will keep your your ab muscle area engaged okay whereas if, if you just think too much about pushing upwards and not concentrating what will tend to happen is this okay and you have this thing called rib flare oh and and a sore shoulder right uh, rib flare and not a lot of core engagement okay so that's why it's important that try and initiate the movement by squeezing the mid back muscles tucking the tailbone under and um, keeping the ribs down and pushing up through the heel and just squeeze hold and then slowly come back down you can maybe do sets of 10 of those so you can maybe do a set of 10 of these a set of 10 of the, the squats thinking about it, but all the while try to really concentrate on the weight distribution even on these shoulder bridges or hip thrusts whatever you want to call them make sure that the knees aren't caving inwards so, okay so push the knees out as you go up um okay you could practice some core work some gentle core work again you could maybe just use a prop like a chair perhaps put a pillow down if you want and just simply go into this position here so when you're doing this i want you to think about bringing your hips forward so that your uh, ankle knee and hip are all in a straight line so usually people if, they, if, they're, if they're not doing core work correctly they'll usually keep their hips back so they'll be in this position for example where you might see people doing press ups like this it's a bit, which is incorrect right so the objective is to for all core work and press ups is to keep your hips forward in a straight line you'll find it harder okay it's more challenging in your core that's because it's been done properly and just try and hold it okay if you want you could add in a shoulder stability element to this and you, if you want you can take your hands off for a couple of seconds and then switch sides okay all the while trying to keep your hips steady so this is just an introductory video of a few things to consider you can practice squats like, they, like we just did you can practice some single leg work some hip thrusts some core work all the lower body work you do though 
even if you're still going to the gym yourself in the lead up to the classes, is I want you to think about your weight distribution, going through your feet, okay, uh, and yeah, keep your trainers off and your heels off as much as you can, because it will be really good for you, uh, and it will, it will hopefully keep you in better health around the Achilles area, uh, once you start running and stuff. Okay, so that's it. I think that's, as I said, didn't want to mention too much, just enough to get you going. So I'll, put, I'll do another video next week, right? Cheers.